In today's video, I'm excited to show you how I made this beautiful dot painted clock. I'll show you all the steps and all the materials so that you can make one just like this at home. Grab all your stuff and let's get crafty. This is Mary. Welcome to the IHC Craft Room. For materials, we'll begin with an 11.8 inch wood round clock that I found at Dollarama and some wood numbers, acrylic paint in white, carousel pink, bright yellow, spun gold, and black. For tools, we'll begin with parchment paper, paint pods or a paint palette, dotting tools, a wrench, Gorilla Glue, a ruler, a stencil, Q-tips, toothpicks, a paintbrush, a wet rag, a cup of water, and some rubber gloves. Let's get started with painting a base coat of white paint. I really wanted to take the clock mechanism off, but I was too chicken. So I worked around it for the first coat, but it was sufficiently frustrating enough that it enticed me into removing the mechanism and praying I didn't break it in the process. Spoiler alert, I didn't break it, so yay me. As always, I'm going to do two thin coats of paint followed by two thin coats of varnish. This will help me preserve my base coat in the event that I make a mistake while I'm dotting and need to wipe things away, which happens almost every time. Next, I'm going to plan out the position of the numbers and use a colored chalk pencil to draw some guidelines using my stencil and this mega huge compass I got from Amazon. The link is in this video's description if you're interested in getting one. I'm trying to get a good idea of how big of a surface I have to dot on at the center of this clock and I'm going to mark off where my numbers are going to start so that I don't accidentally dot past that point and then cover up my work when I glue down the numbers. Since the arm of this clock mechanism is black, I'm going to paint the numbers to match. As always, two thin coats of paint followed by two thin coats of varnish and these guys will be ready. Now let's move on to working on the clock face, shall we? For our first row, I'm going to use my 2.5 millimeter white stylus and light pink paint that I made by mixing carousel pink and white together. When it comes to dot painting, the key is speed. Obviously, this video is hella sped up, but in real time, I'm working at a sedate pace. Remember that old saying, slow and steady wins the race? Yeah, well, if you're in a hurry while dot painting, I promise you will screw up. Place your dots too close together and watch them blend into a blob. So I'm going to heed my own advice and take my time. For row two, we're going to shift the size up a touch to my three millimeter green stylus and using carousel pink paint, I'm going to continue with another round of dots. Let's take a quick second to talk about bubbles in our paint. You'll notice that I'm periodically stopping to pop bubbles as I go. This is important because with time, the bubbles will likely pop on their own and it'll be noticeable in your work if they dry that way. So remember to pop the bubbles while the paint is still wet. We're going to skip past row three for a minute and start working on row four. Using the 5.0 white rod and carousel pink paint, I'm going to place a dot on each of the guidelines. And once we have that row done, I'm actually going to erase some of the guidelines because I won't need them in this section anymore. They'll end up getting in my way. Let's head over to row three now and using the 4.5 white rod and light yellow paint that I made by mixing bright yellow paint with white, I'm going to place a dot and then using my smallest stylus, I'm going to drag that dot down and around to a tapered finish and I'm going to start tucking the tail of each swipe around the next dot. To show you what I mean I'm going to slow this down for one swipe so you can see what I mean by tucking the tail of each swipe around the next dot. As soon as I finish the tail of the last swipe, I'm going to drop another dot just to the left of it and then drag that down and around and I'll just continue that process all the way around until I complete the row. Once that's done and dry, I'm going to move on to adding some black accent dots to the first row. Using the one millimeter blue stylus and some black paint, I'm going to place two small dots in between each dot of row one. On row two, I'm going to do the same thing as row one and continue to place two black dots in between each pink dot. Let's pause on the accent dots and go back to the base pattern. On row five, I'm gonna be using white rod 5.0 and gold paint to place a dot on each vertical guideline. And then using my smallest stylus, I'm gonna pull that paint down in a swiping motion, ending in a tapered pointed finish. Once that row is dry, I'm going to go back using the light yellow paint and my three millimeter green stylus. I'm going to add a swipe on either side of our gold swipes, but I'll position it just a bit lower. And of course, this dotting tool is smaller, so our swipes will be a bit smaller as well. I'm going to place these pale yellow swipes close to the gold ones, but not touching them. We're going to come back later and place some black accent dots in between them. 
Once both the gold and light yellow swipes have dried, I'm gonna go ahead and add those little black accent dots. Using my smallest stylus, the 0.8 millimeter, and some black paint, I'm gonna add a line of diminishing dots in between each swipe. I'll add some paint to my stylus and then proceed to walk the dots to a micro finish without adding any additional paint to my dotting tool. I'll just keep dotting until the paint runs out and we have little tiny dots in its place. Let's hop back to row four and using black paint in the three millimeter green stylus, I'm gonna add a black dot in between each of the pink dots in this row. Let's get started on the outer edge of the clock face. I'm gonna be using pink paint and the 5.0 white rod to lay down a large dot. And then using my smallest stylus, I'm going to make a nice long swipe down to a tapered pointed finish. I'm going to leave a small gap in between and then add another dot and create another swipe and do that all the way around the clock face. I want to draw your attention to the fact that I didn't space this very well and I ended up with a noticeable gap at the end. Oops, <laughs> no big deal. I'll figure out a way to make that seem intentional a little later. Let's move on. Once that outer row is dry, I'm going to use some black paint and the three millimeter green stylus to add some black swipes on either side of the pink swipes. For these swipes, I'm not leaving a large enough gap in between to add a row of walk the dots as we did with row five. Instead, I'm just leaving the tiniest sliver of space so that we get a little bit of white peeking through between the pink and black swipes. Now let's add some gold to that outer trim. Using the three millimeter green stylus and spun gold paint, I'm gonna place a dot just over top of each of our pink swipes right in the center of that area. We're gonna head back over to row five to add some black dots to this equation. Using white rod 5.0 and black paint, I'm gonna place a dot just above the small black dots from row four so that it sits between the base of each group of pale yellow and gold swipes. Now let's add some small gold accent dots to row four to fill that gap between the pink and black dots. I'm gonna use my one millimeter blue stylus and spun gold paint to add two small dots on either side of the black dots. Let's do some top dots on the first couple of rows. For row one, I'm gonna use my one millimeter blue stylus and carousel pink paint to place a tiny dot right in the center of the pale pink dots. For row two, I'll switch to my two millimeter pink stylus and light pink paint and do the same thing. To add some additional pop to our row three light yellow swipes, I'm gonna place a bright yellow dot using my three millimeter green stylus and bright yellow paint right at the top of each swipe. We're gonna use the same three millimeter green stylus, but switch over to light pink paint to add a top dot to each of the pink dots in row four. Let's go ahead and add a bright yellow top dot to the swipes in row five using the 2.5 millimeter white stylus and bright yellow paint. And now let's bring that pink out to the outer rim of our mandala to tie all the colors together by adding some carousel pink dots to the very top of our gold swipes in row five using the 1.25 millimeter side of any stylus. Let's head back over to the outer edge of the clock face and add some light pink top dots to our pink swipes using the three millimeter green stylus and light pink paint. Once that has fully dried, I'm going to take some time to erase all my guidelines before we add the finishing touches to this mandala design by adding some bright yellow to the outer edge of the clock face. Using bright yellow paint and the 2.0 millimeter pink stylus, I'm going to walk the dots beginning at the top of each black swipe. I'm going to fill my stylus with paint, place a dot just beneath the black swipe, and then dot my way down to the gold accent dots I placed earlier. Each of these yellow dots will get smaller and smaller as the paint on my dotting tool runs out. And with that, we're done our mandala design. Once I've let the paint dry, I'll seal this piece with two thin coats of varnish, and then I'm gonna glue down the numbers with Gorilla Glue, and then carefully attach the mechanism back onto this clock. So what do you think of my first mandala dot painted clock? I love the way it looks in my office. It seems to me like I might just have to make myself a few more. Thank you for joining me on this white, pink, yellow, black, and gold mandala dot painted clock decorating adventure. Ooh, how long did it take me to say that long sentence? Let's check the clock. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so that we can continue to get crafty together. Toodaloo!